This is a MOT how-to video. I'm going to be showing how to wire an MOT, how to ballast an MOT, how to make arcs with the MOT, how to um, do resonant capacitors with it, and all that stuff. And of course, MOT safety. Well, first, I'm going to go over the safety MOTs are quite dangerous. They put out about 2,100 volts at fairly high amperage. Oh, about ranging, depending on your MOT and its size, from half an amp to over an amp, which at 2,000 volts is more than enough to kill you. So MOTs are quite dangerous. Do not attempt anything with an MOT unless you know exactly what you're doing and you understand the risks. That's what YouTube is for. If you don't know how to do wiring and all this stuff, and you just don't really understand all this, I recommend don't mess with MOTs. They're dangerous. And like I said, this is what YouTube for. You can go and watch people on YouTube do stuff with MOTs. You can see all the arcs and stuff, but you don't have to actually expose yourself to the dangers of it. But for those of you who do know what you're doing, just are kind of unsure about how um, to hook up your MOT properly and all that um, this video will show you how and I've, I've warned you guys they're quite dangerous and you know what you're doing and you can have lots of fun just you can't have fun if you've uh, killed yourself or burn got a bunch of electrical burns in yourself and you're in the hospital and stuff you can't have any fun that way so just play safe. For arcing, you're going to want a chicken stick so you don't touch the wire or anything that has to do with the high voltage. And on the MOT, there is two coils. There's this coil right here, which is the low voltage primary. And depending on where you live, it'll either be wired for 120 volts AC or 240 volts AC. And it does not matter which one's the hot and which one's the neutral. You can hook it up on either side. But this one, the ones with the big wires, is for your mains to go into. Then the outside of the transformer is grounded, and that is also the one side of your high voltage coil. Then your other side of your high voltage coil is going to be a little connector right here. So again, this is one end of your high voltage coil, and your other end of your high voltage coil is uh, is the case of the transformer. And you can see it attaches right there. And I just have a piece of electrical tape over that to prevent that wire from being burnt off in any accident such as what killed this MOT but if you're going to make arcs from it and stuff you don't you can arc to the case of the transformer but the plasma and stuff can interfere with the magnetic fields of it and you know it's better to kind of bring you away so bring the neutral part where you're going to arc to kind of away from the transformer itself so Right here, I just screwed in this piece of copper pipe, and that's the grounding post. Um, you don't have to ground the outside of it. It's, you know, almost kind of safer not to, because if you accidentally do touch your high voltage terminal while it's on, then it'll this will be referenced to ground through you, and it won't be shocking you through, and this will be the hot side. But, you know, you shouldn't touch it anyway, so... I'd go ahead and ground this, and also it's best to keep your MOT on a insulated surface. You don't want it to be all conductive and stuff, even though if you have a reference to ground, you know, it's still better just to uh, keep it on something insulative. And concrete is not an insulator. It does conduct electricity when you're dealing with this uh, voltage. It will conduct it through there, and I can arc to the ground and stuff through the concrete slab to the ground. So just be careful with this. So MOTs, standard MOTs, like what's in here right now, 
that right there is the standard MOT. That's what's in most microwaves. In any new microwave, that's what's going to be in there. Um, it's quite a standard one. And I have it under oil so I can do unballasted arcs without it burning up. And if you have these unballasted, they will heat up really quick and they don't last barely at all. Um, in older microwaves, there are very big transformers and then there's some medium ones like this one. And the big ones, um, you can arc and arc and they'll be cold. This one, you can arc. And to the point where one of those would be uh, putting out a bunch of smoke and this will be just lukewarm. So, right here is a shell from AMOT. This one's uh, basically, a, this is about the normal size. Um, the kind that's in there, which is really standard for new microwaves, it's a bit wider and a bit skinnier than this one. But this is about the size of basically a regular one. So you can see this one over here is the same height as this is, and this is how this one stood. And when it's up there, it's a bit smaller. So the bigger the MOT you have, the less it'll heat up. But on to the ballasting part. If you're going to ballast it, you can use either an, an inductive ballast or a resistive ballast. In a resistive ballast, you could just uh, use a radiant heater or something like that and plug it in in series. Connect it in series and it doesn't... Make sure you pick something as a ballast that doesn't um, require the hot lead to go in a certain side. So, um, for a demonstration of ballasting, I will use a resistive and an inductive ballast. And so, for one of them, I'm going to use this halogen fiber light, uh, the bigger or the more wattage something is rated for, the bigger your arcs are going to be on your MOT. So this right here is going to give some really uh, small arcs because this does not, this is a quite a small halogen. A uh, big halogen floodlight is perfect for ballasting if you want to uh, go through the resistive method. But there's also the inductive method and the best way for the inductive method is to just take another MOT. Uh, like there's one in here, like I said. And you short out the secondary. And so I have this 30 amp clip lead and the clip lead leads are touching. And this is the ground and high voltage lead in my can filled with oil. But a good yeah, like so when the secondary is shorted on MOT, it is almost like the primary is shorted, but there is some resistance in there from that. If your primary or your secondary is not shorted, then there's going to be a lot of resistance in your primary. So I do some demonstrations of ballasting, and here I have a ballast box. Right here, when the switch is down, it ballasts, and this is where the MOT plugs in, and whatever you're using to ballast plugs in there. So this is ballasted, and that is unballasted. And it's always good to have a physical break in your connection, always have a physical break in your connection before handling your MOT or any of the wires coming off of it. And a chicken stick, sorry, I think I skipped this part. Um, you definitely want to not handle your electrode directly and have a carbon electrode and this can be easily made. You have your wire and you take a PVC pipe because PVC is non-conductive and you will just put your electrode on the end of it and with using some electrical tape and make sure there's no bare wires make sure it's all insulated and rated for the current and voltage or well, rated for the wattage um, that's going to be going through there and I just put an electrical tape handle just to kind of have a nice grip there um, it's not necessary since PVC is an insulator So on the end of my wire, I have a little clip connector thing, which slides right on to the secondary. And right now, I'm going to use my fiber light as a ballast and do my ballast box. So here is where the light, light comes out, and you can see the light changing. So plugging in the MOT, and then. Sorry, let me move over to my ballast box. MOT is in the bottom, 
and the light is in the top. And right now it is um, unballasted. That and it's plugged in. It's live. And that's it. Unballasted. Non resonant. Pull some fair arcs, about 8 inches. But now, I'm going to flip the switch. So now it's ballasted, and you can no longer hear hum from the transformer. And you can see the light shining from there. And when I make an arc, the light's going to get brighter. Because as I said, when the secondary is shorted, the primary um, becomes as if it is uh, shorted too. And like I said, since this halogen is a uh, very low, one of a very low wattage, the arcs are extremely tiny running this. Now I'm going to show the inductive ballast. So remember, always have a physical break before handling the stuff. So I've unplugged the lamp and now I'm going to plug in this other MOT which like I said uh, the secondary is shorted on it right now. And I'll plug that right into the ballasted outlet. And here let's turn on this amp meter just so you can see what it's pulling. with it ballasted and unballasted. And this is an inductive ballast again. It is plugged in now. And let's just do an unballasted test so I can show you how many amps. And right now, without anything, it is drawing about 7.7 .7 amps. And then when I arc, it's jumping up to about 15 I got there. Let's turn on the peak hold setting. So I'm drawing up to about 15 amps, I'd say, with it ballasted, with it unballasted, sorry. And now I'm going to flip the switch, so now we are ballasted using that MOT as an inductive ballast. And you see, the arc size has decreased and with no arc it is around 3.38 amps uh, with nothing no electrodes touching and then when I arc when it's shorted it's pulling about 16 amps across that wire but you can see the arc is much smaller and this makes it safer for different things and you can change you can use a resistive ballast and use different wattages on a halogen lamp to choose just the right arc for whatever you're planning on doing and that just saves your MOT from overheating when it's unballasted. And I have a, an unplugged physical break in the connection and if we just shine the IR temp gun right there it is only increased about um, maybe about 18 degrees since earlier it was 60 and you know it, it's pretty cool right now. So the next thing on the list is resonance. These capacitors came out of microwaves. Each microwave is going to contain one high voltage capacitor. And these are rated from anywhere around 19, uh, 1900 volts to um, 2400 volts. This is a 2300 volt capacitor. This is like a 2100 volt capacitor. I'm not sure about this one. But they'll all work for the range the MOT. If you give it a little bit more voltage, it's not going to really complain. They're all meant for MOTs in a microwave anyway. So for this capacitor, these capacitors are high voltage capacitors in general are just dangerous since they can dump a lot of amperage at once and. After, even if you've discharged them, they can kind of regain a charge, so when you are storing them, always short out the terminals. Even though some of these do have a high, uh, high resistance 
resistor inside there to drain it. Some of them don't, so it's always safe to short them. So this blue one is shorting each side of all these together. But to have MOT resonance, you connect up at least two of them. You have to have at least two capacitors hooked in parallel. So that means all of one side is connected together, and then all the other side is connected together too. Then you'll connect it in series with the output of your MOT. So in this case, this one right here is the one I connect into the MOT. So I'll do that right now. And again, always have a physical break before touching this stuff. So there. One side of the capacitors are connected to the MOT. So this is about three microfarad or three microfarads of capacitance at around 2,100 volts. But this side's connected, and now you connect your chicken stick to the other side of the capacitor bank, just like that. So the side on the MOT is this side of the capacitors, and the side on my chicken stick is this side. And I'm going to set these right there. And now my chicken stick. Make sure you know where all your stuff is before you plug it in, because you don't want to accidentally realize your chicken stick is laying over your leg or something, and then when you plug it in, get a nasty electrical burn across your leg. Right here, unballasted. Plugging it in. Uh, well, first, before I plug it in, I'm going to clamp the amp meter on here, and you can see we can see uh, what the amp draw is, how different it is. So let me adjust the camera a little bit so you can get a view. The arcs are much bigger when you add capacitor resonance to it. There, we're drawing 8 amps, 8.5 amps, with nothing connected right now. As you can see, the arcs are much bigger. And we're drawing up on the meter, it's going up to 19, I see. These are really big arcs. I can pull it about two feet away. That's a pretty big arc. And let's connect our amp meter onto the secondary wire so we can see how much we're pulling on the secondary. Looks like we're pulling nearly three amps on the secondary. Really big arc. So now. I'm going to set down the chicken stick on the insulated surface and let's just ballast it and see. And I'm pulling more amps than I should be pulling through my switches and stuff. So here it is resonant through the ballast. It's a little bit bigger than without the resonance to the ballast. But again, set the chicken stick down on a insulated surface. Unplug. Physical. Break. And then you're going to short your electrodes and leave them shorted. Well, while you have capacitors there, leave your electrodes shorted while you handle the capacitors because a nasty shock from the capacitors is not fun. And I know this from experience. I grabbed on to a couple of electrodes. Luckily, the capacitors had been um, off for a while and the resistor inside it had dropped the um, charge down a bit. But just be very careful with uh, the capacitors. Um, if it shot goes through you just wrong, then it can go through your heart or something and stop it, and that's not fun. So, be very careful with this. So, make sure your electrodes are shorted, and you can see it's against the case of the transformer. And then when you're done with your capacitors, always take one end and then short it onto the other side of the capacitors, just like that.
and then you can take your chicken stick back off of it. And always store the capacitors connected together. This video has uh, been fairly long, but I tried to include all everything. And another thing, right before I end it off, if you're going to run unballasted for a long time, then put it under oil. You can use mineral oil, though it's expensive for per you know, volume, and it's not a, really that great to use. I wouldn't really use any other oil because it could be conductive. The best thing to do is use transformer oil, which I have in here. And even then, you may have to have something to take the heat away from the oil. Otherwise, it's still going to overheat. But you can get transformer oil from electric motor shops or um, local power station. If you find that transformer guys, you could probably ask them for a gallon or so, and they could pump it up. And they probably give it to you for free, since it usually costs them more to sell it to you. But yeah, if you're going to run on ballasted, put it under oil, like that one is. Let's see, there's oil. But yeah, if you watched through this whole video, then thanks. I tried to make it include everything. So uh, thanks for watching, and bye.